Hey there, so today we have another review. This is a beer from North Coast, so this is an OG brewery that I'm glad it's still around. It seems like a brewery that, like, um, I mean, no offense to a lot of, bre or, yeah, no offense to a lot of, like, OG breweries that have closed. Um, this seems like it would, would be a dying brand, and I can't imagine the volume is the same as it used to be, but uh, shout out to North Coast for still being around, and, you know, shout out to, um, I mean, I think most of you guys know uh, Old Respite and Imperial Stout, like, their classic awesome beer and then actually shout out to their old ale which is holy smokes one of the best beers uh, they've ever produced and i'm super glad it's in 12 ounce bottles and that was one of the best beers i had two years ago so um this is prankster <laughs> uh this is a beer that just sits on the shelves i mean i remembered it being around for like you know a decade ago um the, the this beer along with uh brother thelonious they're like quad or you know belgian dark ale uh this is their belgian style golden ale uh fort bragg california uh, has that like Belgian label to it? Uh, what's this? Um, uh, the artist Bruegel? Bruegel? I don't know. You guys, you art geeks out there that are better than me, uh, posting comments below uh, which uh, Belgian artist uh, this is. But um, yeah, and then uh, this is only, I think it's only some six. Well, yeah, it was on the website, it's only some six. So that's a little bit smaller than like, um, I mean, comparable beers would be like Dufel or uh, Delirium Tremians. Um, Golden Monkey is a. I believe a triple, right? They call it triple. Anyway, similar style. Uh, a lot of those beers actually end up around like eight and a half, nine percent. So it's a little bit tinier. Speaking about this beer being on the shelves for a decade, uh, that's <laughs> probably literally the last time I had this beer. So uh, it's been quite a while. So let's take this beer. So it definitely doesn't pour like heavy, like or at least like you know, um, if I did this to a traditional Belgian beer, it would be flowing out of the glass. Like you, you I couldn't pour it light enough. But I was pretty aggressive about it. I mean, ideally, if I did that, like, <laughs> the head would be up to here, up to here. And uh, pretty relevant. I have a delirium glass here. So let's take this beer. Uh, beer comes in a really nice kind of, um, yeah, like old color. Has a solid kind of, like, medium to medium minus haze to it. Uh, yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, smells familiar. Uh, smells of like pear drops, um, a little bit of light alcohol, a little bit of uh, the Belgian plasticky phenolic, quite fruity, a little bit of like orange zippiness, a little bit of sweet cantaloupe, and <sighs> ripe apples, pears for days, a little bit of like, um, I mean like the sweet cantaloupe is almost like this kind of like banana, so it's like, you know, bubblegum, banana, um, all that isol isol amyl acetate, like kind of a little bit of a, a 4VG, that kind of clovey note. Smells nice. Cheers. Yeah, really light and dry. Very light. Hmm. For a beer that's over 7%, this beer is actually tiny. Again, in the sense of like um, context, right? Like we're talking about like a bigger beer of um, Delirium and... Gold Monkey and um, Delirium Tremens, or sorry, I already mentioned Delirium Tremens, but like, um, hell, at my work, we make a uh, Belgian Golden Trong, sort of like a triple, but somewhere between. Uh, it's 10%, and this beer is just not that big. Like, it, it really tastes a lot tinier. Full line, I would have guessed this maybe was something like a Leffa Blonde, uh, which I think sits around six ish, seven maybe at highest. Um, yeah um on the palate it's uh quite sweet um get a lot of like candied sugary um almost like cotton candy kind of sweetness up front uh, along with a lot of that nice um aromatics but it's not as uh strong and lasting so it follows with nose a little bit of like um sweet candied banana thing um you know Classic isolama acetate, kind of like runts kind of action, a little bit of sweet pear action, a little bit of sweet orange tangerine thingy going on. Mm -hmm. Candied, sweet, fruity. But then, like, it's not lasting. Like, um, it, you know, it has a little bit, it's kind of like, you know, after you've eaten through the juicy fruit, uh, oh, sorry, after you've had like a juicy fruit bubblegum after that first few minutes, like, that kind of just, like, like, just, it's just gone, right? <laughs> There's no more juicy fruit left. It sort of does that trick to you. Like, after a third or half the palate, like, boom, like, a lot of flavor just vanishes off the palate. 
a little bit of grainy sweetness. You taste the malt for sure. I will say a little bit of fruitiness lingers back further and further, maybe towards like uh, two thirds of the palate. Um, I definitely like the nose. It was almost it's banana. I keep trying to call it like sweet cantaloupe, but like I think it's just straight banana candy runts. But I could get a little bit of that kind of like um. There you go. Uh, Japanese bubblegum. So that kind of like a cantaloupe bubblegum that comes a little white box. Has a little bit of that. You guys better palace than me here. Or better mem memories than me. Uh, shout out to what bubblegum that is. You know, it's pretty good. Like, the thing I like, and then uh, on the back end, it's just a little bit more of that fruitiness. Dries out quite nicely. Maybe a little bit of uh, floral hop action on the back end to help... Um, balance and bitter this beer out but it is pretty nice in the sense that like it's nice to have variety in these belgian beers and not everything has to be uh the same that's the cool thing about belgian beers like belgian beers are very much defined by the brewery and the beer they make it's not so much BJ bjcp like this has to be a triple this has to be a quad this has to be a belgian gold strong out so many of these beers just overlap 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 uh, so much abv overlapping so much uh, um so much just like uniqueness of like this is the beer we make and it's blonde you know like we don't care about categories it, this is just prankster it is what it is so it's nice to have like prankster being its own kind of animal um it's a little bit bigger than your um belgian blonde L's, right uh it's a little bit lighter than them but then it's a little bit smaller than your again the beers i mentioned delirium tremens and duel and all that other stuff so pirat too man when was the last time you had a pirat <laughs> um yeah so it's just a little bit tinier a little bit session a little bit more sessionable but now we're talking about using the s word the session word for a beer that's m6 which is straight up double ipa <laughs> so it's it's the crazy world of belgian beer and it's like so drinkable so um it's high utility high repeatability uh it doesn't have a ton of impression for me but i think it's nice that it sits in a nice place of like hey this is like a belgian beer that's not almost 10 percent. it's you know around sim five and like though no, you know what i will say the big thing you're lacking is the um, carb, that Belgian qu um, quaffability in the carb. It's just so important. Like part of what would make this beer great is like if they bumped up the volumes of CO2 just a little bit more to make it scrubby and like so Belgian-y and that big head and the, the ability to make a slow pour and have that racy carbonation. It's just, you know, that's why, again, I have the rant before, Hefeweizen, Without that car, without the carbage, is not the same. Belgian beers without the carbage is not the same. It's so definitive and makes the 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 uh, quaffability. The, the word is quaffability, drinkability of these beers. And this beer is definitely drinkable, very nice, uh, nice and light and dry and drinkable. But like that extra bonus is just like, I mean, it's like it's an ice cream sundae without whipped cream. Like, you know, like what are we doing here, right? So, um, is it a sundae at that point? It's just like it's just ice cream. <laughs> Uh, mixed culture of antique East trains produces floral, full fruity, full fruity flavor and clean finish. Yeah, yeah, spot on um, description. Um, it's good beer. It's actually pretty cheap. Like for the single, I think it was like three dollars. So I imagine the six pack has to go for. I think it's actually a four pack. I forget. Well, I remember it being a four pack. I don't know what it sells now, but um, four pack. Let's say it has to go for. If I bought it for three dollars for a single, I assume the four pack sells for ten or twelve. You guys post the comments below. Um, has to be cheaper than that. Then maybe ten dollars for the four pack. I don't know. You guys post the comments below. What's the, what's the cost on this? Because this cost me three for the single, and obviously they charge you extra for the single. So um, good value. See, like, as you wait more and more and more, the beer ends up a little bit too fruity. And it's not that sweet, really, but it just, it's missing something. Um, that carb. <laughs> Good beer. Eighty-seven? Eighty-seven. That's North Coast Prankster. What a flashback of a beer. For a beer that has still existed and a beer that... I've literally had probably twice in my life. It's been like 10 years. So a classic classic that I've skipped.
And I'm not too disappointed I skipped it, but that's still a good rating, 87. Cheers later.